Life has been hard for Fode Fekan. Pressed into fighting for President Charles Taylor's forces while still a teenager, he dropped out of school in the 12th grade. After the war, Fekan was desperate. He sold his card for the UN disarmament, demoralization, rehabilitation, and reintegration program to his commander for 300 United States dollars. It was uh, because of poverty I do that, because I do, I do not have money at that time for me to sustain myself. That how I sold the card, I never go through the program. I regret, and then after, after the war, I was frustrated after my woman died. The car's wife left him with seven children, all girls. They are now with their grandparents in Bombing County, while their father fends for them here on the Wedu Man in Grand Cayman County, in Liberia's western region. He spends long hours with handheld tools on a blazing hot sun. I only dream a job because I get nothing to nothing else to do. Just across the border from Wedu is Kenema, Sierra Leone's largest mining region. Between the late 1990s and early 2000s, Taylor traded guns and ammunitions to the rebels, Revolutionary United Front, who were based here. In exchange, the rebels gave Taylor diamonds that he used to buy more guns. This greasy trade fueled the fighting and earned their gems a stigma throughout the war as blood diamonds. Eighteen years after the war, thousands of miners have flocked here. Many are ex-combatants. Mohamed Sanu is a father of three who operates a claim with a small staff here. Just like their Liberian colleagues, Sanu and staff apply physical strength and bare hands to look for gold and diamonds at this unregulated claim. And just like Faka, Sanu is an ex-combatant. Sanu fought for a civilian militia made out of local hunters of the Mene ethnic group known as Kamanjors. The group fought against the RUF. Sanu did not sell his ticket to the DDRR program. On Sierra Leone's civil war ended in 2002, Sanu was one of 75,000 ex-combatants disarmed by the UN, a program largely considered a success by international human rights groups. But when it became time for the rehabilitation program, Sano could not go. By that time, my daddy, my father, he sick very seriously. And I mean, the big boy became a small, a small, small one, there will be around here. So I decided to say, La De Uta. Faka and Sano are among thousands of ex fighters in Liberia and Sierra Leone who have turned to artisanal money for survival. As the post war economies of both countries have struggled, ex fighters have found themselves with few choices. Besides this dangerous and poorly paid work, those like Faka and Sandu, who missed out on skills training and reintegration programs, have been hardest hit. You know, maximize what they could do to follow better their lives. So they seek to find less paying job, others job, you know, menial jobs that will sustain them, that will bring in the daily breath for the day. Justin Samuels operated the Liberian Network Technology, which provided computer education for Liberian ex-combatants. Samuels says he knows many who have paid that price. <laughs> it is a tough life here. Manos die regularly from man collapses and perf, worsening living conditions and environmental damage. Drugs and prostitution plague many areas. And on top of all that, the pay is low. In Liberia, manners earn about 31 to 50 US dollars weekly, while their counterparts in Sierra Leone make 21 to 42 US dollars. As the pandemic recession battles local economies more, more unemployed people will likely find their way on demands. That will put a further squeeze on ex combatants who have fewer opportunities. Samia urges the governments of the two countries to restore skilled training programs to help them. In an effort to, to, to help 
we, you know, restructure and revive or get ex combatants back into the system to, to fully integrate them where they become useful citizens. You have to set up the structures wherein they can go and have acquire the requisite knowledge, whether it be vocational, technical, or whatsoever. For now, ex combatants in both countries have no choice but to continue struggling and risking their lives at Mansas and hope, finally, for they when daily struggle for survival might be behind them. This report was produced by Power TV in collaboration with New Narratives with funding from the German Development Corporation. The funder had no say on the story's content. I'm Anthony Stevens reporting.